Hey Hero fans, this is Todd. So today I have a Powercon Stratos, and the wings on this Stratos are super floppy, as you guys know that have them, and the wings just kind of flap around. So I went and, and got a two-pack uh, Stratos, the one that's uh, Merman and, and Stratos, and he has the blue wings that look the exact same color as the Powercon one. So I'm going to get rid of these floppy wings that are on this Stratos and replace them with the new wings from this Stratos. Now I've already heated the Stratos up, popped his hands off, and, and, and took the wings off. And you can see they're blue, and there's his hands right there. And I could just leave them blue, which I'm thinking about doing, or I could paint him gold to match the Powercon Stratos. I think I'm going to go ahead and paint him gold. So let's go ahead and put this guy in some hot water first, so we can uh, take off his wings and his hands. And while he's heating up and getting ready, we'll go ahead and uh, paint these gold and prepare them and get them all ready to go. So the best way to put him in hot water is first put his arms together over his hands, have a cup of water that was, was, was boiling at one point, and then once you get him adjusted, stick him in there for a few minutes, and then it'll soften up the, the plastic enough so you can pull the hands off and eventually take the wings off. So let's go ahead and uh, paint these wings gold. So all I want to do is just paint the arm cuffs. Two ways to do this. One, I can actually take the paint pen and just paint it directly on there, but you don't have a lot of control that way. I'd rather use this cup and put the paint in the cup and then use a paintbrush so I have better control of, over where, where the paint goes and how much paint goes on it. The best way to do it is first shake it up as you saw and then put a bunch in the cup with a tip. I actually like these paint markers a lot. They're a very convenient way to get paint um, and you can paint so easily with them and it's just a great way to store them. I've had this paint marker now for a, a number of years and it still works just fine so for storage it works great. All right, now I know this particular paint is not water soluble, so as I apply this, I have to be very careful because wherever I apply it, it's not going to come off later. So I have to be very careful to apply it just to the areas I want it. Now, obviously, I want it on the cuff all the way around so it matches the PowerCon figure, but you're also going to want to make sure you paint um, the front of the cuff and the back of the cuff, and none of the paint, you don't want any of the paint on the inside of the cuff because that might interfere with the articulation later on and it may not spin, it may actually stick and pull. The spinning. So you'll notice as I'm applying this, you want to put on a lot of thin coats really quickly. This paint does dry pretty fast and as it dries it gets really sticky and starts to pile up and you lose the detail in any of the parts you're painting. So make sure you do it quickly. Lots of thin coats very fast and then make sure again no paint on the inside as you do this. Now you can see with the brush you have a lot more control and that was the plan. So make sure you have good control as you're brushing this on. So make sure you get, get it in there exactly where you want. Make sure each brush stroke is intentional to exactly where you want to place the paint. You don't want to be uh, haphazard with just putting this paint on because again, it's not water soluble. It's not going to wash off very easily. In fact, this is probably this paintbrush's last time because I know this paint is really hard to clean out of there. All right, on to the next wing. And again, same procedure. Lots of thin, thin coats, light strokes. Be intentional where you put it and make sure you don't get any paint on the inside where the wrist is going to make contact with, with the actual ring, ring cuff. Alright, so as I'm painting this, I'm thinking, do I want to clear coat this or not? Now, there's a couple ways to clear coat it. One way I could clear coat it is with a, a matte finish that I actually like how the matte finish looks most of the time. But a matte finish is going to take the gold shine away from this paint. Or I could use a, a very uh, high gloss finish, which will keep the gold finish but sometimes a high gloss paint will leave uh, whatever part you're working on sticky. So I'm kind of debating right now as I'm painting this. I think I might go with the matte finish. Um, the original wings were not really that shiny to begin with, so I think it's going to work good. Do make sure whenever you use any kind of a clear coat or finish, you want to always cover the original parts that you don't want covered in some kind of masking. Because again, once that paint touches that original plastic, it'll become really sticky. Um, just keep reapplying paint as you need to. Again, as paint does dry very quickly on, on these paint markers. So make sure you get those coats on there as fast as you can and make sure that it's accurate. All right. Just keep working it around. Get every little detail. Make sure you don't have any spots. A lot of times when you pull the brush across the bumps on the wrist cuffs, you'll notice the back side um, will be bare because the, the bristles kind of flare out across the bump. So make sure you go back and, and check those little details. You're only going to get one shot at this. You don't want to go back and retouch because it'll get too thick. Alright, let's see how this figure's doing. 
He's been in there quite a while. The parts come off really easily. I can just pull those wings right off now in the hands. And now he's ready to get his new wings once the paint is dry. But I'm going to first head down and I'm going to clear coat these. Because again, I don't think it needs to be that shiny. I'm going to use a, a matte clear coat. All right, I went ahead and clear coated them and I waited for it to dry. And here they are. And you can see the blue painter's tape I put on there to protect the, the plastic from getting the clear coat on there. Um, the blue painter's tape works great, has a lower adhesion, so when you pull it off it doesn't stick to the whatever parts that you may have had already painted in the past or may have come from the factory already painted. You also don't want to use any tape that has a lot of residue, because that residue is going to cause problems later on. So again, blue painter's tape works good for this. You can also use the green painter's tape. And so these wings are ready. Now, one thing I did notice is that the actual cuffs themselves are a little different. Because they had to make new molds of these figures, because the original molds were in the old factory that, that they weren't able to acquire, they had to remake these molds. And the ring cuff on the old ones actually had an indent to fit around the wrist. You can see on that figure on the side. But on this one, you can see that the new ones are uh, thinner than the old ones. So I'm going to heat this up to put it on there to make it fit. Make sure you get the right one at the right side and the left one at the left side. And I don't want to use the hot water this time because if you put a part you just painted in hot water, it's going to cause some issues. The paint gets really sticky very quickly and could cause some issues. So I have this heat gun here. This heat gun is awesome. It's, a, it's actually a heat gun that has two settings, high and low, and it's a, a, a Wagner gun. I do suggest we use a heat gun. This is a great one to get. Um, if you can't afford a heat gun, just, just grab a hair dryer. A hair dryer works good too for this. It does take a lot longer in order to, to uh, heat the part up enough to stretch to fit on but these heat guns work really well. Um, keep it on a low setting. You should be able to have your hands in front of it. If it gets too hot on your hands, it's too hot for the, hot for the plastic. So um, if you can't stay in that area, if it's too hot for you, then you have too much heat applied to the wing. So make sure you, you keep it just warm enough to be pliable, but not too hot to melt. Also make sure you have some kind of a place to put your heat gun when it's done. I have this little cork pad I use, it works great. Um, you always want to think safety. You don't want to put your heat gun when it's hot because that metal gets pretty hot somewhere. So now that the wing has been heated up, it just slides on, out on the wrist. You can see how that kind of fits on there. Now the wing is flared a little more than I want. Um, I am going to heat it up again later and uh, push that wing back into place. And because it's a harder plastic, it will stay once it's done. Now I'm going to heat up the center part where the hand goes. And when you heat this up, you want to make sure the forearm gets warm as well so that part will pop in. Um, you got to make sure not to heat the hand itself. You want the pin to be solid as you push it in, into the forearm. It does, it's going to take a little bit of pressure, a little bit of work to get it in there. Just make sure that you're hanging out of the, the arm at the right angle so you don't uh, break the arm when you do this. All right, there we go. Um, you want to make sure also that that wing does spin freely. You want to check it right away before it gets too cool. If it happens to uh, shrink on that wrist at the wrong angle, it will cause issues with it later on spinning. So we got to make sure we have a chance to rotate that, that wing. All right, this other wing's just about warm. Let's go ahead and uh, put it on there and see how it fits. And again, always put your heat gun on your cork pad. Now this wing actually fits better. It fits a, a lot tighter to the arm. I'm not sure what caused that problem. But let's go ahead and uh, heat up the forearm and put in the, the next arm, the next hand. And again, don't heat the hand, just the forearm. In the past, I've had problems not knowing that trick, and I used to heat up both pieces. And what happens is then the, uh, the hand won't go into the hole because it's too flimsy and flexible, and then you're stuck um, having to try to cool the hand down in order to, to be stiff enough to pop into the hole. All right, let's go ahead and uh, heat that wing up so we can get it to stay in place the way we want. I'm just going to heat it up right where the hinge part is supposed to be in, 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 the, in the scope. And again, because this is harder plastic, once it, it cools, it will stay in place. So that, that's the cool part about it. It's not like those flimsy wings that we're replacing. All right. Kind of hold it in place a little bit, make sure it's straight. I'm going to actually lift the arm so gravity can help us keep, keep this in place while it cools. These figures are nice that you have like a, um, when you go to move the joints, they click in place. That's a really cool feature, but sometimes you're trying to do something like this, and so, sometimes it gets in the way of trying to, 
to manipulate the finger where you want it. So you can see now the wing's actually pushing a, a, a lot nicer towards the arm. Make sure they still rotate around. And there we have it. Now we have our new Stratos. He's ready to go. Now these wings, the floppy ones, I'm going to actually keep them so I can put them back to the original configuration. That's what I like to do. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys uh, next video. And make sure to uh, like and share. See you later.